What's going on, guys? As I predicted a few days ago, well, anybody could have predicted this, but uh, Intel has started cutting prices to their processors in response to AMD's Ryzen CPUs that are coming in uh, March 2nd. They shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, pretty much. And it's kind of cute to watch this. It reminds me kind of of, uh, well, 10 years ago, 2006, 2007, when Intel has just started dominating the CPU market and AMD just kind of went for graphics cards instead. AMD still has the FX series, but it's a few years old by now and uh, Intel kept pumping out processors. AMD was just unable to compete and Ryzen is about to change everything. I will be discussing the pricing of these motherboards in the video, um, but if you don't want to watch the whole video, there's links in the description to each of these motherboards so you can check them out right now. The pricing is pretty much the same on all sites, Newegg, Amazon, it doesn't matter. Right now, they're all the same. It may change in the future. I already presume that you know this, but in case you don't, there's uh, five different chipsets on the AM4 socket. The cheapest one being the B300, then there's X300, A320, B350, and the most expensive motherboards are used Using the X370 chipset. AM4 motherboards will also require DDR4 memory only, which is kind of bad news for all of us that still use DDR3 memory because we have to buy DDR4 memory if we want to get an AMD Ryzen build. Now, at this moment, the cheapest Ryzen motherboard is the Asus Prime B350MA. This is a micro ATX motherboard. It comes with four DDR4 slots with a frequency up to 3200. Due to it being a micro ATX motherboard, it does not support uh, either it does not support either SLI or Crossfire. It has only one PCI Express 3.0 slots and two PCI Express 2.0 slots. It also comes with an M2 slot for storage. You, you're likely to connect an SSD to that. It provides better speeds. As far as USBs go, it supports USB 3.1. It has two slots for those. Now, this motherboard, in my opinion, is the most versatile of the new Ryzen motherboards because it has all these features and allows you to put any Ryzen CPU on it. Uh, so if you get a cheaper one uh, for starters, you can, of course, upgrade later on. I think in a combination with a six core AMD Ryzen, this would probably be the best price to performance ratio. This is the Asus version. There's also the MS and Gigabyte, which should be about the same price and offer similar uh, features. Now, this was the B350 M8. Now we're going to talk about the B350 Plus, which is uh, about $10 more expensive, but there's not many notable differences. The one that is a notable difference is that it is a full ATX motherboard, so it's a lot bigger. Another difference between this and the previous motherboard is that since this is a full ATX motherboard, it does support Crossfire, but it does not support SLI. Both of these motherboards are kind of mid-range motherboards for the uh, Ryzen and CPU and they will both be overclockable so you won't have any problems with that. Also the B350 Plus comes with two extra 2.0 USB slots. And now we come to the X370 Pro, which is the flagship motherboard for the Ryzen CPUs. It comes at a price of $150 and it has pretty much everything you need to make the most out of AM4 CPUs. It doesn't have any LEDs on the motherboard itself, but it does have a four pin header for light strips up to two meters long. So you can pretty much illuminate the entire system if you want to do that. It also supports both SLI and Crossfire. Also both PCI Express slots uh, tied to the CPU will have full safe slot reinforcement and wide spacing for maximum airflow. The other slot worth mentioning is the four lane M2, which is located below the AM4 socket. Now the direct connection to the CPU lets the NVMe SSDs hit amazing read and write speeds. Another great feature is that the Ryzen CPUs can be overclocked with a single click using the board's five-way optimization routine or the extensive manual controls. The Fan Expert 4 provides full control over the system cooling whether you're an air, liquid, or a combination of the two. There are four fan headers on board, uh, plus one tuned for all-in-one liquid coolers and another one for high amperage pumps and fans. If you don't have a dedicated sound card, the onboard audio uses an S1120A codec with the uh, same 130 decibels input signal to noise ratio and 120 decibels output signal to noise ratio found on the more advanced ROG Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard which is about hundred dollars more expensive and we were about to come to that in a second. Networking controller is the Intel Gigabit Ethernet which is the same as in the Crosshair which is the more advanced motherboard and uh, this time it has TurboLand software to intelligently manage packet delivery. In my opinion this is the most well-rounded motherboard out of all these and uh, at a price of $150 it's it's really cheap compared to some other Intel motherboards, which are like $250 up. Considering all that, I would highly recommend this motherboard. 
And now we come to the real top of the line motherboard for the Ryzen. And uh, that is the Crosshair 6 uh, from Republic of Gamers. Now it uses the same chipset as the previous motherboard, the X370. They both have mostly the same features. Now this one is specifically designed for easy overclocking, whether you're new to it or an expert. It has full auto tuning for the CPU. Uh, it also has fan expert enhancements for cooling. It's fully equipped for overclocking, which is one of the reasons it costs $250. For a full list of features, I'm just gonna post a picture up here so you can see it. Maybe you can pause the video. But yeah, this is the best motherboard technically. However, I don't think it's worth buying unless you can use the full potential of the motherboard and are planning to overclock a lot. That's it for today, guys. If any new motherboards come out that are better than this one, I will make an update video. But until then, if this video helped you, comment, leave a like, and um, subscribe if you want more Ryzen content and gaming builds in the future. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just advice, leave in, in the comment section down below. I will respond. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.